This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, we're going up to the observatory today and looking out through that telescope, looking into space, because we're trying to solve a puzzle and a mystery. Today we're looking at Escape the Room, Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor. This is for three to eight players. It's from Think Fun. It is a family level game, but it's supposed to be sort of like an escape room in a box where you have lots of puzzles, you're working on them together, and you're trying to get to that solution together. I'm not gonna spoil anything here. I'm just gonna show you generally what comes in the box and how, how, how certain things work. Uh, but let me show you a little bit about the game and I'll see you on the other side for my final thoughts. Escape the Room has five envelopes that all have puzzles within inside of them. There's also a solution wheel that you'll be using to try to see if you're right at certain times during the game. Some of them have puzzles right on the front that you'll be using to solve with things from other envelopes. And some of these envelopes might have other special things inside that I'm not going to talk about. The solution wheel is cool because it has what icon you're trying to solve and from that icon you're trying to place the different solutions and if you look in through the solution wheel you're trying to see if you're correct or not. And without spoiling it, if you look at that white dot, uh, it shows the solution to a puzzle. If at any point in time you have two white dots showing the same icon and that's the puzzle you're trying to solve, you have gotten the question correct. And you'll just be working through all these puzzles and some other ones that will come up throughout the game and you're trying to do it over a certain period of time. All right, there it is, the Escape the Room. Uh, now, I had heard a lot about this before I played it. A lot of diehard gamers are like, oh, that game's so easy. We did it like 30 minutes. Our game group just ran through it. It's boring. It's it's not that fun. It's way easier than I, than I thought it should be. And I gotta tell you, I was going into it expecting all those things. And I like to think that I'm somewhat intelligent <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but honestly, I didn't feel that. Now granted, I don't think it's like a brain burner to the point where you'll never find the solution. But I will say it's not as easy as everyone else said it was. Uh, there's some puzzles, sure the first one is like super easy, but that's just to get you going using the wheel and stuff. But as you go on, there'll be some puzzles that might take you some time and I thought that was cool. Uh, there actually was one time that we totally got stuck. Uh, it ended up being a missing piece <laughs> that uh, I'm not quite sure if it was missing or we lost it, but it wasn't there and it kind of screwed us up for a while and we had to go get some hints. The cool thing is there are some hints online. If you get stuck in the rule book, it tells you where to go and you see them one layer, one layer at a time and they give you the very obvious clue first and then another clue. So I, I was able to test that out. It works out well. Um, and overall, it's great. It, it did take us you know, 90 minutes to two hours to play. It says three to eight players. Yeesh. I think seven or eight is probably even six through eight might even be too much because there wasn't that many times where there were multiple completely different puzzles working on. Sometimes we were working on different puzzles, but we didn't always have all the information we needed to do that puzzle at a time. So I'd say that many players is probably too many. Also, I don't see why you couldn't play this with two. Uh, there was a few hours where somebody left. It was just my dad and I, and we did fine with it. I don't think it was hard with two players. So I really think this is probably, you can play it with two. I'd say up to probably four, maybe five max. Uh, but with that, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this. This is a very fun family game and it's only about 20 bucks. In fact, I am planning on buying the next one because I had so much fun with this one for 20 bucks to have a two hour game that's this fun. I also love the last puzzle, which I'm not gonna spoil at any reason, but I just thought it was very creative uh, what they did there. I mean, all the puzzles were kind of cool. With the last one, I was like, oh, that was really cool. Great ending. Uh, and I gotta highly recommend this for families. I even say if you play with a gaming group, as long as you go with the expectation that this isn't going to be the biggest brain burner ever, but it's not going to be a total cakewalk, I think you'll like it. And for 20 bucks, it's a great value. Uh, and that is a Think Fun's version of the Escape Room, which is Escape the Room, Stargazer's Manor. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.